we want to look for the next eight weeks at the subject, draw near unto God. Draw near unto God. And God has given to me a series entitled The Tabernacle and You. And God is going to relate the tabernacle to us and relate us to the tabernacle so that we can see we're going to put those preachers who preach only the New Testament and, 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 and say the Old Testament is irrelevant. We're going to put them to shame in the next several weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody needs to put them to shame because they're lying. You know, God gave us the entire word of God from Genesis to Revelation. The Old Testament and the New Testament are so important to the church today. And we're going to show that. The Holy Spirit's going to reveal that to you. Why the Old Testament tabernacle was important and how it relates to the church today. And more specifically, how it relates to you today. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, giving thanks on this beautiful day, this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, Father, we ask that you will send your anointing upon your people. Uh, many are waiting to hear your word. Draw them near unto you, Lord God. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity. Use us, Lord, to the praise of your glory. We commit every care to you, every sickness, every debt, every persecution, every problem, every disease we give to you, God. Every need we commit to you. Now, Lord God, speak to us through your word. Use this, your servant, and bless your people. Lord, bless your people. Bless Jen Ryder in Maryland. Bless Linda Barrett in Pennsylvania. Bless Andrew McBride in Connecticut. Bless Elijah in Kenya. Bless all of your people worldwide. You are God of the whole universe, and we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for the next 30 minutes, we're going to look at uh, the subject, draw near draw near unto god or draw near and our subtitle is the tabernacle and you and if we were going to give a sub subtitle this would be the tabernacle and you part one introduction part one part one of an eight um week series that the lord has given me to develop and to show you how to draw near unto him. And, and, and you can please God when you do this, and God's going to bless you. I, I say God is going to bless you mightily. So we're looking at an eight-week series. And ladies and gentlemen, if you teach this to your family, your family will have a greater understanding of what the real church is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, your family will want to go to church with you after they get this eight-week series. Your family, your family will realize the importance of Bible study. They will say, oh man, I want to study that Bible. I want to study the Old Testament and the New Testament because what God reveals to us in the next eight weeks will be so important to our eternal life. God wants you to know he loves you and, and he's got a plan that the Old Testament tabernacle was not just a tent that they carried through the wilderness, but the Old Testament tabernacle is relevant to us today, relevant to the church on your corner and relevant to the worship where I am church. So let's take a look at Exodus chapter 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. So God spoke to Moses and said he wants everyone in the community to give an offering. But it must be a willing offering, a, a free will offering. Don't take anything from anyone who wants to give grudgingly. But I want a free will offering. Verse 3, and this is the offering which ye shall take of them. This is what God required. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what God required of Israel. God brought Israel out of Egypt. They were loaded down with wealth. The Egyptians were so glad to see them leave Israel. They, Egypt, they gave the Israelites gold, silver, gave them clothing and everything. They were so glad to get those Israelites out of their country. God put a whooping on, Israel, on Egypt. And so God said, now I want an offering. 
take an offering of the people. Ladies and gentlemen, God does not want stingy people. He doesn't want stingy people in the kingdom. He's given much to us, and much does he require of us. Yes, he does want an offering. Praise God. This is not one of those ministries that beg you for an offering. You know you're to give your uh, uh, tithes to your local church. You know nobody needs to tell you that you need to give unto uh, a, a ministry. You know that. But every now and then we might just tweak it and, and remind you of what God says. God says, and this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. God was not asking, he was not asking for rags. He was not asking for some of that stuff we put in the Goodwill uh, dumpster. When, uh, he's not asking for stuff that we leave at the, the, the place where we drop our old shoes off. God, God is not asking them to give them worn out clothing. God is saying, bring me purple, blue. He wants royal, clo royal garments, royal clothing, and scarlet, and fine linen, and goats here. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, God is asking for their best offering. Remember this. God is asking for your best offering. He's not asking for the leftovers. He's not asking for the crumbs. He wants the best. Verse 5, and ram skins dyed red, and badger skins, and shittim wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod, and in the breastplate, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Verse 8 of Exodus 25, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Ladies and gentlemen, this verse is so important to where the church is today. God said to Moses, tell the people to build me a sanctuary, a building, a place where I may dwell with him. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, get the significance of this. The God of all creation, the God of all the universe, the God who controls the sun, the moon, and stars, who hurled the stars into space, who controls the billions and, and, and zillions of planets. He's saying, have them make me a building where I can dwell among them. Ladies and gentlemen, it is significant. God of all the universe, the creator, says, I want you to build me a building, a house, a place, a tabernacle, a tent where I can dwell with you. The God of all the universe, ladies and gentlemen, is willing to come and, and, and settle in one place in the whole universe. He wants to have one place where he can dwell among his people. And at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, he can still rule the world, control the universe, control the planets, keep the stars moving in space, keep the sun shining. But he wants a place because he loves us. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, because God loves us so much. God wants a place where he can dwell with his people. Church folk, listen up. God wants a place where he can dwell. It must be a place that uh, uh, adheres to his specifications. He wants a place. And so he says, bring me an offering and build me a sanctuary. Verse 9, according to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. And so God gave Moses the plan, and Moses uh, obeyed God, and they took the offering and brought the offering to Moses and brought the skins and the, the materials and the, the royal garments and, and the gold and the silver. See, God despoiled Egypt so that his people can have wealth. God will take the wealth of the heathen and give it to the church. And God wants you to be generous in your offering. God wants a free will offering, ladies and gentlemen. When you get a blessing, you need to bless somebody else. When you get an increase, increase someone else. But most of all, when you get a blessing, give the portion of it back to God. God is generous. He's kind. He, he wants the best for us. Ladies and gentlemen, as you study God, 
for the rest of your life. You will see he is giving. He's kind. He's loving. He's always giving his best. And ladies and gentlemen, as we see the uh, appropriation of the materials to build a tabernacle and the things that will go in it, we see God preparing to give the best he has to the world. He's getting ready to send Jesus Christ into the world, and he's preparing the Israelites to receive Jesus by the example of the tabernacle. Ladies and gentlemen, the tabernacle is a, 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 is a shadow of Jesus Christ. The tabernacle is a shadow of Jesus Christ. All of this because, ladies and gentlemen, look at the big picture. God wants people to draw near unto him. The purpose of the tabernacle, the purpose of the temple later on, the purpose of the church is for God's people to draw near unto him. God has a place on earth where people can draw near unto him. You may not be able physically to get out to that place this morning. You may not be able to put two feet on the floor. You may not even be able to get dressed. You may not be able to get in your car. Your car may not even start. You might not even have a car. But you can draw near to God to that place where he wants you to be. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Ye shall find rest unto your soul. We thank God for the Holy Ghost. We thank God for the Holy Ghost in teaching us. We thank God for his word. So God is saying he wants people to draw near unto him. The God of all the universe, ladies and gentlemen, he is everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at once. He's in Russia. He's in China. He's in Brazil. He's in North America. He's in Africa. He's in Asia. He's in Australia. He's in Europe all at once. But he's saying, draw nigh unto me. And he's showing us, ladies and gentlemen, through the scripture, how we can draw nigh unto him. That is why it is so important for you to study the word of God. That is why we want you to join us for Through the Bible in One Year every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. to get the scripture, get the whole word of God, get the big picture. Look at the intricate parts and how they fit into the big picture. God is saying, now build me a tabernacle. Then God tells Moses what things to put in the tabernacle, tells him what kind of wood to use, where to go and get the lumber and, and, and who the craftspeople will be, who the craftsmen would be, who the, the metal workers would be, and uh, who would put this uh, tabernacle together. God is showing Moses how to do that, and Moses obeys God. I'm putting a schematic on the screen for those of you who are watching uh, the screen, and this schematic is showing you what the tabernacle actually looks like. The tabernacle that, that Moses had built based on God's prescription was a tent. It was a tent, ladies and gentlemen, made up of different kinds of furs and animal skins. And it, uh, it was enclosed by a, 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 like a wall or a fence, and it has certain portions. But ladies and gentlemen, this tabernacle, as you look at this schematic, and if you don't have a schematic, uh, I will send you one uh, via email and look at that schematic and what you're, when you look at the tabernacle, the way it's laid out, the plans that God gave to uh, Israel, you're not just looking at the tabernacle, you're looking at the church today, ladies and gentlemen. The way the church is laid out, the way that we're talking about the church uh, building, the worship service. Uh, it's laid out just like the tabernacle, just like the the temple was were laid out, and it has certain uh, items in it, certain areas. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go a little bit further. Let's stretch this a little further. The tabernacle, the layout of the tabernacle, represents the human body. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to get this. God wants everyone to worship Him. 
God wants to indwell every person. He wants to live inside of everybody. He desires to tabernacle with people. And so this plan, this layout for the tabernacle is also a layout for the human body. In the next eight weeks, I will show you what body parts, what portions of our body, uh, uh, including our mind, soul, and, and spirit and emotions, how we relate to the tabernacle that God gave Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, God is showing his people how to worship him. And he wants a place where he can dwell. And so our body, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to get this. Our body is a replica of the tabernacle. God designed the human body to be a replica of the tabernacle because God wants us to worship him and he wants to indwell us. Well, that might be a little bit uh, tight right now, but chew on it a little bit and uh, study Exodus 25, study Hebrews chapter uh, 10, chapter 9, and, and look at uh, Hebrews, uh, Exodus chapter 37. And look at the building of the tabernacle and then begin to relate. Ask the Holy Spirit to relate to you and show you how the tabernacle is a replica of you. How the tabernacle is a replica of the church, the body of Christ. How the tabernacle is so important. It, you must understand the tabernacle in the Old Testament, ladies and gentlemen, to understand the church today, whether the church today is a cathedral or a storefront. Whether the church today is a little table under a grove of trees as we have worshiped God in Kenya and we're coming back in July at Kenya and, 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 and if we worship God under the trees, that's still good because God is there. Whether the tabernacle is a, a, a three or four kitchen chairs out on a lawn under some, out on the hillside in Kenya uh, with people sitting on the ground the whole feature, the whole structure of the tabernacle, the layout relates to the church today. When you walk in the church today, when you walk through the doors, God says there's a way in which you ought to walk through the door. The way the people were to come through the gates of the tabernacle is the same way we are to walk into the doors of the church. If you don't go to church and you're going into your prayer room, your prayer closet, you need to follow the pattern of the tabernacle, ladies and gentlemen, and the temple so that you can approach God the way God wants to be approached. God gives us in this schematic, this layout, this building of the tabernacle, he gives us the way to approach him. He shows us how to draw a nigh. A lot of people can't touch God. A lot of people don't get their prayers answered because they're going about it a whole different way. A lot of people don't take time when they come to church to uh, uh confess their sins before they leave their homes. They come into the church with an attitude. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot enter the tabernacle of God with an attitude. You must stop at a certain place and get clean. So we're going to look in the next eight weeks at the features of the tabernacle. We're going to look at uh, the first stop off space. And you might want to write these down, take some notes, uh, uh, or review the tape. The very first place, ladies and gentlemen, in the tabernacle, as God says, draw nigh unto him, there are six pieces of furniture in the tabernacle. And every one of them relates to the church today. Every piece of furniture, ladies and gentlemen, relates to our physical body that the Lord has given us. So you need to pay attention and need to listen up because God is making this thing so plain. He's making it so plain. He's putting the Old Testament and the New Testament together and showing the church how to approach him. And after these next eight weeks, you ought to be able to approach God, draw near unto him, get your prayers answered, and, 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 and worship God and praise God and thank God that you listen uh, to these messages. The very first spot that uh, the people stopped when they went into the tabernacle, and they went there to give an offering unto the Lord and to worship him. Now, the tabernacle was a, 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 a tent building. Uh, there was an enclosed portion called the holy, of, the holy Place and the Holy of Holies. 
and follow the cursor here, the holy place and the holy of holies. This was all enclosed by, it was like a tent. It had uh, animal, animal skins, furs, covering, no natural light, no natural light uh, in that place, uh, except for in the holy place where they lit a lamp. They lit seven golden candlesticks for light. But in the Holy of Holies, there was no natural light. It was dark in there, ladies and gentlemen. But then, every now and then, God came by, and the Shekinah glory, that's a term you're going to learn, the Shekinah glory illuminated the place. The light of God, the Shekinah glory. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to know this because this schematic of the tabernacle shows us how to approach God. In order to approach God, you just can't go to church any old way you want. Somebody's mad sitting in your seat. You get mad. You cuss them out. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't draw near to God cussing somebody out because they're sitting in your seat. You can't uh, get mad at the preacher because cause, cause he got a guest preacher coming and you came to hear your pastor preach. You've got to be open to the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. You can't enter into the church and as soon as you hit the door, you smell chicken frying and food being prepared and people laughing in the kitchen and you want to worship God. Ladies and gentlemen, God laid this thing out so that we can worship him in the spirit of holiness. And he's got requirements. It's a step-by-step -step procedure. And in the next eight weeks, as you look back on this series, you'll say, wow, my prayer life has improved. I have improved my prayer life. My private time with God has improved because I now have, see a greater vision of who God is and what the church is all about and why God made me. Ladies and gentlemen, go back to Psalm 139, 14. The Bible says, thou art fearfully and wonderfully made so that you might praise God. God made you fearfully and wonderfully so that you might worship him and praise him. That's your purpose. That's your purpose. You, 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 you were not made to be a sex slave or a drug dealer or a drug addict or a whore or a whoremonger. You were not made to be a thief, a, 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 a criminal, a convict. You were made to worship God. Now, if you're one of these, one of the above, then you can get change. You can get change in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You can get saved. You can get born again. You can get delivered from whatever condition you're in, and you can become all that God wants you to be. And the Bible shows us how. So the first place that people stopped when they came to the tabernacle, and they came uh, with an animal on their back to offer an animal to the priest so that the priest could slaughter that animal and burn that sacrifice unto God. That's the way they uh, 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 had their sins covered back in those, those days. Ladies and gentlemen, they could not pray in the name of Jesus because Jesus was not on the earth. He had not come to the earth. And God set up a, a, a plan to get rid of your sins. If you have sinned, then bring an offering. Bring an animal and Offer that animal to the priest. The priest will slaughter that animal and spread its blood on the altar and burn that animal on the altar. And then you go back and live your life. And whenever people sin, they had to come back to the tabernacle, bringing animals. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I know that if I had lived back in those days, I'd have been at the tabernacle every day, sometimes three or four times a day. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I believe some of you might be with me. Amen. Amen. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so can you imagine millions of people coming to the tabernacle every day, bringing animals, uh, oxen and sheep and goats and turtle doves, and offering them unto God. And the priests would burn those offerings unto God to cover the sins of the people. So the first place was called the brazen altar. It was made out of bronze. It was the altar where the people had to burn a sacrifice unto God. And ladies and gentlemen, as we go through this series, you will see how this altar relates to Jesus Christ. This altar 
is a type of Jesus Christ, where Jesus Christ was burned outside of the gates of the city. He was burned. By this way means he was crucified. He was uh, put to death outside the gates of the city of Jerusalem. He became the offering of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible teaches us that one man's sacrifice became a one-time offering for all sin. And when Jesus died on the cross, no longer was it necessary that man bring an offering unto God and burn that offering on the brazen altar. However, with the church, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to go over this again and again and again in the next eight weeks, with the church, with the believer, this tabernacle represents your body. This tabernacle represents your identification with Jesus Christ. This tabernacle represents your approach to God. And so in order to approach God, the first thing you need to go do after you enter into the gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, if you came on this program, if you're watching this tape and you don't have joy and, and thanksgiving in your heart, you've not praised God, you've been grumbling and complaining, mumbling, and you've been mean and acting nasty, you need to repent. You need to back up this tape repent start worshiping god and then start playing the tape again come on somebody and stop at the brazen altar and and offer yourself ladies and gentlemen this is important offer yourself as a sacrifice unto god just as jesus offered himself for us offer yourself as a sacrifice unto god the songwriter said is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid your heart does the spirit control you will only be blessed and find peace and sweet rest when you give of your body and soul so station number one the brazen altar we must stop at the altar in order to draw nigh unto God we've got to stop at the first place stop at the altar and here we must offer ourselves as a living sacrifice unto God. The Bible says, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice for us. Now we must offer ourselves as a living sacrifice unto God. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, how often do I have to do this? Every day, ladies and gentlemen, every day. Well, they don't teach this in the church. I know they don't teach it in the church. You're getting some good, sound teaching now and you can check it out you can proof it with the bible proof it with the holy spirit ladies and gentlemen it's time that the church started teaching this every time you approach god you must stop first of all after you begin praising him and worshiping him thanking him then you must confess your sins you must offer yourself to god at the altar you must sacrifice yourself unto god you can't go to God with a proud spirit. You can't approach God all puffed up. God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You can't go to God with an idol in your heart, with someone bigger than God in your heart, with, with your own estimation of yourself greater than God. You must humble yourself. And so we must stop at station number one, ladies and gentlemen. And station number one is the brazen altar. We must, we must offer ourselves as a sacrifice. In other words, just as those animals had to be put to death and were burned on the altar, we've got to be put to death, ladies and gentlemen. We must die to self every day in order to approach God. In order to approach God, you must die. You must die. You must die. You and I must die die we must die to ourselves we must die to sin we must die to our emotions we must die to our own will we must die to the things that we want and then when we are burned on the altar when we have uh, 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 surrendered ourselves to the Lord when we have humbled ourselves before him then we can proceed to the next step and the next step is the brazen laver it's a washing place it's a washing bowl the brazen laver we'll talk about that next week 
amen. But right now, we're going to leave you at the brazen altar. We want you to go back and read Genesis, I mean Exodus chapter 25. Read Exodus chapter 25 and, and, and look at what God is saying. And then in your reading, go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22, which says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies wash with pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise so as we proceed to the next stop station number two the laver then we've got to uh, draw near unto god with a pure conscience and uh, uh, with a sincere heart with the full assurance of faith faith that as god leads us through this tabernacle as we are on our way to the Holy of Holies ladies and gentlemen that we don't miss a step that we get cleansed that we get washed that we get the right attitude that we surrender our will submit to God and then by the time we reach the Holy of Holies ladies and gentlemen and in the church in the church many people never approach the Holy of Holies because they have not been taught. They have not been taught. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time the preacher stands up to preach the word, there should be silence in the church. There should be an atmosphere of expectation. There should be an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit can do great and mighty works with signs and wonders and miracles if the people would only approach God correctly, the word of God will be able to do wonders exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think if we approach the Holy of Holies the right way. So ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to join me for the next seven weeks as we look at our The Tabernacle and You series. As God says, draw near unto me and we're going to look at the six pieces of furniture in the tabernacle the brazen altar the brazen laver the table of showbread the golden candlestick the altar of incense and the ark of the covenant in the holy of holies each one is significant the church needs to know the significance today we will relate each of these pieces of furniture to the church today, and then we will relate each piece of furniture to your tabernacle, your temple, the body that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit live in. We will relate these as God gives us the anointing. Praise God. This is Pastor Carter. You have a blessed day. Amen. You have a blessed day. You might not shout today, but as you go through this series, you'll get revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge might be better than the shout. Amen. The shout's only temporary, but revelation knowledge will last a lifetime. This is Pastor Carter. Praise God. If you have any questions about uh, these messages, give me a call. Hit me up. Hit me up on um, my email, Leroy Carter 69 at yahoo.com or send me a message via Twitter that's at btm at btbmin at btbmin or give me a call 404-205-1101 it is such a blessing such a blessing to be here at the worship where I am church you all go back and review those scriptures study that Bible, and I'm looking forward to seeing you the next time. In the meantime, join us on Wednesday night for Through the Bible in One Year. 
through the Bible in one year, uh, 7 o'clock p.m. God bless you. Praise God. We're